everyone, today I will introduce you to a 4.3 inch screen S3 to S3 development board. First, let me show you the front of this development board. The front of this development board is a 4.3 inch touch screen. Then we look at the back of this development board. The back of this development board shows some of its main components. We'll introduce you later. We first power on the development board. This development board has to power supply interfaces. That is, the USB interface can power it. One is a universal USB interface. The other is a USB to UART port interface. We can use these two interfaces to power this development board. We chose this USB interface. You can see, when the power cord is the USB cable plugged into the USB port, the power indicator light comes on, indicates that the development board has been powered on. Then let's take a look at the front of the development board. There is already a program running. This program is a common LVGL demo. This is a demo of LVGL version 9. Let's take a look at this development board running this demo. Still relatively smooth because the screen is glass. It is very reflective. So the actual picture you see will be clearer than the video. Let's look at this screen from different angles. You can see a clearer image from this angle. The 4.3 inch screen is a medium sized screen. We can use this size screen to design many control interfaces and display interfaces. For example, we can use it to control home appliances. For example, controlling air conditioners or washing machines and other home appliances. It can also be used as a control center for a family's smart home to show the operating status of some related home appliances. You can see that there are many pins on both sides of this screen. This diagonal pin has 20 on each side. There are 40 pins in total. The main pins are the GPIO interface of ESP3 to S3. There are also some power interfaces and grounding interfaces. Look at the core of this development board, which is the ESP3 to S3 module. This ESP3 to S3 module is a module with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functions. You can see this black printed circuit board antenna. It is the antenna for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. This antenna can receive and transmit Bluetooth and Wi-Fi signals. Make this development board have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functions. This ESP3 to S3 module. There is a very small line of words below. You can take a look. This is written MON16R8. If you have a magnifying glass, you can see it more clearly. Now the angle is clearer. MON16R8. And 16 means its flash is 16 meters. R8 means its PS RAM is 8 megabytes. This means that this module has 16M flash and 8M PS RAM. Flash is the equivalent of a computer's hard drive, can store data and programs for a long time. PS RAM is equivalent to the computer's memory, only when powered on, can read and calculate programs, etc. PS RAM reads faster than Flash. So PS RAM is mainly used for calculation. Flash is mainly used for data storage. So the larger the flash and PS RAM, the better. However, for MCS with limited performance, generally, it is enough. 16M flash and 8M PS RAM are a very suitable configuration for MCS. It is also a relatively large flash and PS RAM. 
can run relatively large LVGL program interfaces or other related programs. Let's take a look at this development board. With a USB 2 serial port program upload interface. This USB is a serial port in the form of USB. This chip is a serial port chip. It is CH340. We can use the computer. Connect to this development board via USB cable. Upload data via UART port. Or data exchange with UART. This CH340 needs to install the driver. We need to install a CH340 driver on the computer. Then you can connect this development board to the computer. The computer can recognize this development board. So our first step is to install the serial port driver. If you have already installed the serial port driver, then this development board can directly identify. If you don't have this driver installed, you need to install it first. As you can see, next to this USB, there is a square white device. This is a LED light. It is a colorful LED light. We can control the flashing, color, etc. of this LED light through the GPIO interface. This LED light can also use the ESP32 PIO interface. Learn how to use the GPIO interface to control a simple light. In addition, these two buttons, these are the common boot and reset buttons on the development board. The reset button is a button that directly forces a restart. We can power on and see. We turn on the power. You can see that the power indicator light is on. Pressing reset has no effect on the power indicator light. But after we pressed reset, the screen restarted directly. It is equivalent to restarting the entire system. Press again. You can see. The entire restart process takes a few seconds. Then press the boot button. It is actually connected to the GPIO0 interface of ESP32. As you can see, there is a pin for GPIO0 at this location. When you press the boot button, GPIO0 is grounded. That is to say, our boot button. It is a button that connects GPIO0 to ground. Generally speaking, when downloading the program, we press the boot button, then press reset, then release reset. Release the boots again. You can see that the screen has gone dark. That is to say, already in a state of program code waiting to be uploaded. Now we can download the code to this development board. For example, we use Arduino or ESPIDF tools. When uploading code to this development board, it is best to be in a state where it can be uploaded. Of course, this state is not a very mandatory state. That is to say, not in this state. It can also upload code. For example, we press reset. Let this screen light up again in this state. If GPIO0 is currently grounded, because it is possible that GPIO0 is high voltage. It could also be low voltage. Usually, we often use this development board. GPIO0 interface is in ground state most of the time. Even if you don't hold down boot, it is also a grounded state. So in this state, it is also able to successfully upload the code. But occasionally, some programs may trigger GPIO. Make the voltage of GPIO0 high. Then in this state, you can no longer upload code. So it is recommended that you use the boot reset combination to upload code. But when people use it more, maybe for convenience, don't press this boot reset. Upload the code directly in this state. But there may be occasional glitches. Uploading code will fail when the GPIO0 interface is not grounded. So in order to standardize, it is recommended that you remember how to use boot reset. In addition, when in this sample, if the code upload fails, 
It is recommended that you first try to upload using Boot Reset. On both sides of this development board are the pins of the main GPIO pins of ESP32. That is the GPIO of this module. It is led to both sides through the PCB board. Of course, there are also some power supplies and other related pins. There are 20 diagonal pins on one side, a total of 40. You can connect sensors through these pins, or you can connect other devices. It can also be connected to a screen. For example, this screen now occupies some GPIO pins. Connect to the ESP32 module through this cable. We can also connect another screen through these other pins, including connecting the camera to this development board. Of course, you need to check the operation methods of related hardware and some applications of GPIO pins. You can also see, there is a thin line here. There's a chip on it. This is a driver chip for screen touch. The touch and display of the screen are separated. This is equivalent to applying a layer of film on the screen. Then we directly operate and touch through this membrane. Then another layer is displayed. These two are separate. Of course, some development boards combine these two lines, but it's essentially the same. They are all separate. One is touch. One is two display. In addition, this development board has an SD card slot. This SD card slot is mainly used to expand the data function of ESP32 because the ESP3 to S3 module, it only has 16M of flash. It is actually quite troublesome to read and write data in flash, only through professional software. To transfer data or read data from flash, the SD card is the small card we use more often, generally speaking. Most laptops nowadays have an SD card slot. You can also read and write data to the SD card directly through a laptop. Then insert the SD card into this slot. Then through some of our related ESP3 to S3 libraries, we can read and write data in the SD card. The whole use will be more convenient. For example, we can write photos, images, and other data to the SD card. Then insert it into this card slot. Then read it through the ESP3 to S3 module. Display the photo on this screen. We can also use these two rows of GPIO pins to connect some sensors. For example, we can connect a temperature sensor to this development board. Then read the real-time data of the temperature sensor and display it on this LCD screen. Show some data changes on this screen. For example, similar curves are possible. Then let it collect data in real time. We can store the real time collected data in the SD card. Realize the data collection, display, and storage functions. In addition, other GPIO pins can also be used to implement some other functions. For example, after we get the temperature, we can use it to control a motor or control a relay switch, or other switch of an air conditioner. Then achieve a temperature control purpose. You can also control lights or other controllers through relays. This development board is generally very good screen size. The resolution is 800 480. Overall, it is a high definition screen. It is also very convenient to operate. We can use it for many applications. You can also use it to learn ESP3 to S3 development. Overall, this development board is still a relatively small. It is also very comfortable to operate with one hand. Okay, this video ends here. Thank you for watching.